Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow City right behind me and I thought I'd take you for a walk around the famous business district of Moscow what they call Moscow City or New Moscow City and I thought I'd check out some of the skyscrapers there's also a pretty cool shopping centre here as well so we're going to go for a walk through that as well and let's enjoy the afternoon shall we I thought I'd start on the other side of the Moscow River where the embankment is here because they've got a really nice view of Moscow City from this side of the river it's very difficult to get this whole area into shot no matter where you stand so I thought it was only appropriate I start here and there's actually a really nice park that you can walk along and a nice path leading over to the edge of the river and I thought this is the absolute nicest spot to start the video from there's really not too many people around here today it's a little bit of a secret of Moscow where you can come and get this beautiful view of Moscow City and the skyline with all of the very big skyscrapers you can actually see down there also the electric river tram going by it is actually a little bit cooler today than it was the last few days so I've got my jacket back on and I almost was tempted to wear my beanie because it's only about five or six celsius today and they did predict a little bit of rain in the afternoon so hopefully that'll hold off and it won't spoil the mood of walking around in the famous business district of Moscow one of the reasons most people don't know about this spot is because it's not very well connected by public transport it's about a 10 minute walk from where I came from behind me to Katusovskaya metro station and then if you walk about 15 minutes in this direction you end up at Kievskaya railway station so it's kind of in between both and a lot of people particularly tourists wouldn't come to this lookout or vantage spot and have a look at that as I swing around so nice such a contrast to see the skyscrapers of Moscow and then see some of the older buildings literally right where I'm standing here perhaps my spot here to see the view of Moscow City is not so secretive I found a couple of other people coming to get that exact same photo that I do every time I come and you know it's just a nice spot it's actually a lookout but it's really just a car park and there's a few people parked over there but not too many and you can actually see on the embankment down there the electric river tram stop now it actually stops on both sides of the river for obvious reasons so you can get into Moscow City and then if you're curious about how we're going to get across the river now of course I'm not going to swim because it's too cold they've got the Bagration bridge right here now if somebody's from Moscow and you can correct me how to say the name of this bridge I'll be very happy it's actually a little mini shopping center as you walk across so we're going to go through that and then we'll end up right under the buildings about a week ago the mayor of Moscow announced the start of scooter season and literally all over Moscow you're seeing these scooters now parked up everywhere and there is probably about 50 or 60 of them right here now I can see why because of the fact it's not immediately near a metro station a lot of people would ride them going to or from the metro to get to this point to then cross over the bridge I have a very interesting question for everybody and I hope somebody can get the correct answer in the comments of the video please tell me in Russia why they have nine story apartment buildings why didn't they build at 10 or 12 or 8 and why did they finish at level 9 now let me see in the comments who can get the absolute correct answer to this I've walked across this bridge hundreds of times and I've never noticed the no filming sticker right here I'm not too sure why but perhaps because it's a bridge or something that crosses the Moscow River but we're going to go across anyway and get over to Moscow City 
I'm not going to show too much of walking across the bridge because there's a lot to see in this video but there is some very nice food right here I think this looks like Turkish pastries I'm not too sure but they definitely look nice and there's another small shop on the other side the only one I want to show you here is on this side they've got like a little Italian shop so David if you're watching check this out we've got this little tiny hole in the wall shop it's got the ham right there and all the different cheeses and even some different pastas and then all the way along the bridge as you walk there's different cafes with some very nice views of the river the only thing is they could clean the windows a little whoever the guy is that has to climb out on the roof let's get those windows cleaned as I keep walking across the bridge there's a few shops a few cafes a few coffee shops and there's this interesting shop here that doesn't have a name however if you look in the window it has Hollister and Abercrombie and Fitch clothes now this is a very well-known American brand and they did actually have shops in Moscow at some point well going back about two years ago they did and this store sells all of the clothes from that brand and they've got literally all the different types of men's and ladies clothes the very very famous hoodies I think everybody knows just such a random place to find this shop so I wonder for anybody watching if you know those two brands or not now they did actually have shops in Moscow at pretty much all the shopping centers for a lot of years and then of course they all left Russia but then this store appeared now I've actually seen this store before and I've walked through this shopping mall a few times but just so interesting to see it in such an obscure place that probably doesn't get a lot of foot traffic walking past it every day I think most of you know that I'm not well versed in things like museums and going to galleries and when I see these kind of sculptures I really never know what to make of them and this is at the Moscow city end of the bridge when you come out and walk in of course it's a pretty cool statue or I guess sculpture and they've actually got a nice domed roof right over it anyone knows more about it let me know please as I walk around the center of Moscow city there is a few different vantage points to get a nice view of the buildings and obviously as we get closer to them and right under them they get a little bit harder to get a good shot of them and they're just huge how big they are now I know around the world there's big buildings but in Moscow it's just very unique that they're all clumped together in about a two or three kilometer radius one thing that's easy to see as you walk around is just the sheer size of the place and just how overbuilt all the surrounding areas are from the buildings and even just this boulevard here with the staircases they could have built one staircase and be done with it but they built seven staircases around this I guess it's a viewing point or a walkway and we can actually see where we cross the bridge just in front of us here and there is actually an entrance to the metro on this side of the river as well I probably really should do more homework and more research as I come out to make videos in these sorts of places just to talk about the buildings these in front of us here are actually residential towers and they're not quite finished I don't think I think they're still working on them I think it would be some point this year that people can start moving in and they are just monstrous towers they don't look it from probably watching it on TV and on your phone but in person it really is <laughs> they really are big buildings and you can see now just the sheer size of these towers and this curly one right here 
Now I know a lot of people are going to correct me in the comments what they're all called. But there's some pretty cool architecture and design that went into making these. And it seems like the pavement just goes on forever and ever. This is a very big amphitheater right in front of us. And then perhaps at some point they hold concerts here. I've never actually attended anything in the center of Moscow that they've been doing at this place. So I wonder how often they might hold them. I think almost every time I come to Moscow City, it rains. And every time I try to make a video here, it rains. I wonder if it's just me that's jinxing myself, especially when I want to come for a walk outside around the streets. And slowly the rain's getting a little bit heavier. It's not too bad for now. Hopefully it won't spoil the film and this video too much. If we look just off to the right, just here we can actually see Afia Mall, which is this shopping center right dab in the middle of all of the skyscrapers. And we will walk through that as well in a little while. Now it's a huge shopping center to squeeze into one video. I'll at least walk through some of the main parts just to get an idea of the size of it. And again, these buildings, wow. As you walk around the center of Moscow city, there is actually quite a lot of maps letting people know where different entrances are to the buildings. And it's actually in English and Russian, which is handy. Now we actually crossed the bridge up here. And then now we're walking along the street here. And then in the center here is the shopping center. And then all the towers basically wrap around the shopping center. So Evolution Tower is the curly one. Empire Tower. And then Federation Tower on the other side. We will see a little bit more of these as I keep walking around. It's just an interesting map just to show you how small of an area everything is crammed into. Most of the roads in the center of Moscow City are actually a closed district and you have to enter and exit through parking booms and it's basically paid parking. Now, I was going to show motorbikes a little bit earlier and I was wondering why there were so many that parked right by the buildings. It's because motorbikes get free parking. Now, what's interesting for regular cars, it's six US dollars per hour during daytime hours. And if a bus comes in, it's a, well, it's pretty much $50 per hour for a bus to park in the center of Moscow city. So it's not that bad for cars really in terms of inner city parking, but that's a crazy price for buses. If you're wondering where I actually got off the Metro, it's just off in the distance where that new building is being constructed. And then you can't actually cross that traffic bridge. So I walked along the embankment on the other side of the river. It's a very nice walk with the buildings. Now, of course, it's not the most picturesque of days today with the clouds and rain. And then we cross the bridge just off in the distance there. Anything that is a little bit brutal today is the wind. Now, it's not that bad temperature wise at about five Celsius but the wind just whips around these buildings <laughs> and it's very cold with the wind. You know, I'm not really one to complain. I mean, I love coming for a walk around in Moscow city, but just the wind could calm down a little. It would just be that much nicer. There's almost a point where you're just pointing the camera straight up to get a perspective of the buildings and how cool they look. And as I walk around this central part around the shopping center, each building has a bit of a different view that it offers. Now, the one thing that's quite noticeable is there's very little, if any, advertising on the buildings. Now, the only ones that are really showing here are the different bank brands. And otherwise, they're completely all nameless buildings. Of course, car parks aren't the most beautiful things to make videos about. But I just want to show those residential towers off in the background there. 
and how cool they look from here. I mean, really and truly, they're just massive buildings. And that'll be cool to go up the top of them. If anyone owns one of those apartments, let me know in the comments and I'll be there tomorrow to make a video. If you do work in Moscow City, let me know in the comments. And if you work in one of these high rise buildings, please invite me to your office or at least to the elevator tower and a window view so I can make a pretty cool video from where you work. You know, I'm not gonna tell people where it is, but I reckon it'll be a pretty cool view. If anybody's a channel subscriber and you're working in one of these buildings, let me know, please. Now it's been raining for about the last 15 minutes and I've actually been hiding under cover and it's just stopped a little bit now. And what I wanna show you is this building right here now tax compliance. Now, that's a bit strange, but it's actually an Aurus car dealership. And there is one car in there, apart from my shadow here. And you can just see the Aurus in there. And this is actually an Aurus dealership. There's only a few of them in Moscow. And I'm trying to arrange to go and do a nice tour of one of these dealerships. I'm actually in contact with the company at the moment. I just wanted to just walk in and start filming because it's just not polite to do that, although I could. But I just thought uh, it's just interesting. There's no Aura sign on the roof of the building letting us know which car models they're selling. If the weather was a little bit nicer, there'd be people out here on the boulevard, on these tables and chairs having coffee and lunch. But today, I think I picked the worst day of the last week to come and check out Moscow City. The buildings are still pretty impressive though. But Jess, we need the rain to stop and the blue skies to appear. Come on weather, sort it out. I thought I'd come inside for a little while while it's raining. It's only meant to rain for about two hours and then it'll be clear for the rest of the afternoon and evening. And I'm actually in one of the lobbies of the buildings and they've got some nice coffee shops. And actually I've been in here before on the lower ground floor, they've got some supermarkets. And it's just very interesting that you think these are all just traditional office buildings. But then they've got cafes and restaurants and supermarkets in them. The main idea with all of these lobbies like this, they're actually all in interconnected. So you can actually come in this lower ground floor of this building and then walk through to another building without actually walking out in the street like I've been doing. And especially on a day like today, you don't particularly want to walk around in a suit or a dress going between the buildings. And you can literally just walk underneath the buildings like everybody's doing here. And as you walk around all these different tunnels, they've actually got the signage letting you know there, Moscow City Underground Passage. And then there's different letters which represent the exits from each building. So if you're really lost, you can definitely find your way out. And there's also all the signage for the metro stations as well. This wasn't actually the shopping center that I wanted to be a main part of the video, but as I'm just walking through these passages, some interesting shops. There's one here called Custom Drop, and they've got all the different Western brands of shoes that you can actually get. And there's a pretty cool display of them over here. All of the Nike and Jordan shoes, which essentially you probably couldn't find anywhere else in Russia, apart from finding these small shops like this. Now I realize today why I'm not seeing too many people walking around the street, because everybody's walking around these series of tunnels under the city. Now, I knew there was a few of them that existed, but I didn't realize there was this many that literally connected all the different buildings together. As I keep walking underground, I found another one of the maps here and it's got the overlay of these tunnels all underneath the buildings and then they connect to each one. And I never knew they existed. Imagine living here so many years and then not realizing this. I mean, generally when I come here, I just come to one place and then leave. But you know, once you take your time to walk around somewhere a little bit more, it's just so interesting, this series of underground tunnels. As I keep walking around more and more, 
essentially it's just a whole series of cafes and restaurants and small shops all underground so especially for everybody that works here in the different buildings there's plenty of places to have lunch and eat and then at some point you can find your entrance to go back to your building all of the different restaurants seem to represent a different place as well so there's one here from dagestan there is also one here from turkey so different types of food from all sorts of different regions there was one just ahead of me here from Vietnam and then of course if you want that fancy bowl of salad soul in a bowl not even a single word in Russian on the sign there right there but it's so fascinating this is like another separate tour that I didn't realize I was taking everybody on and as I keep walking the lighting and the mood changes as we go from each building that's connecting each other. Now, someone who perhaps works in Moscow City, let me know, is this something that's new? Or has it been here for a lot of years and I've just never walked around these tunnels under the city? Because there is some obviously well-known, recognized restaurants and then cafes, but I just never knew this whole underground existed in the center of Moscow here. I really need to get back outside and film some of the buildings of Moscow City, but perhaps this is a whole different video that I'm making now about the tunnels and the underground of Moscow City. It did make me think a little bit earlier why there wasn't that many people walking around. And I was just assuming everybody was at work. You know, they're not downstairs here in all these cafes and restaurants having something to eat. <laughs> it's just cafe after cafe here as well and a lot of it's all from different international uh, restaurants or at least different themes of food which is just fascinating so i think by the end of the video it's going to be quite a diverse start and end of this whole journey that i'm taking you on from way back over on the moscow embankment and i basically wanted to walk around and then end up in the shopping center and they get the metro home. But after discovering all these tunnels, I'm just a little bit in shock that I found somewhere new to discover in Moscow. I finally made it back outside to the street level and have a look, blue skies are appearing. And as promised, according to the weather man, he said between about three and five, it was gonna rain. And then after that, it was going to clear up and this is the opposite side of Afia Mall here which we're going to go into shortly and it looks like there's green space on the outside of the building but it's really just a sticker that they put on the glass that makes it look a little bit more spectacular than what it is and then again we can see some more of the buildings wrapped around and we'll go for a little bit more of a walk and we'll head on into the shopping center Perhaps all those BMWs that I showed in the Aviapark video are working here in the buildings. Have a look, three in a row right here. And they are nice cars. And, you know, they're, they've got some look to them. I imagine everybody likes the black colored cars though. And then have a look, another Maybach. This guy's blocking in this guy right here. Pretty sure he's just waiting to pick up somebody though. I think almost anywhere that you look up, you're gonna get a view of one of the tall buildings. Now, I'm not sure how big these actually are, and I probably should have looked some of them up, but even if you just stand right here in the center and then just look up, it's a pretty cool view. Now, of course, in other cities around the world, there's tall buildings as well. You know, I'm not really in any sort of unique place, you know, then maybe somebody that lives in another big metropolis of a city. But I just think this Moscow city area where I am literally here is quite cool because it's just so compressed and so much in one small place. As part of the Afia Mall, there's actually a hotel right here as well, the Novotel. 
Now I'm not too sure if this company was leaving Russia or not. The name of the building's never changed. And the signage, the spelling is correct. So it's all good. It's pretty cool when this sun comes out and you just look up at these buildings, the different reflections that you get and the different views. And it's just so diverse. I mean, literally I can walk 20 minutes from here on the other side of the river and there's just very traditional looking views of Moscow and normal height buildings. And then you come to the center of Moscow city and then you see all these different towers just clumped together like this. It's really interesting when you spend time like I'm doing today, just walking around a little bit slower and discovering little pockets of the center of the city here. This little grassed area, which is quite random. There's even a sign saying you can't even walk on the grass. And then, of course, you can look up again and see a different view of the city and a different perspective of each different building. Man, they're huge. When you walk around the street level, you just don't feel it until you really get under them like this. And then, you know, it's just another perspective altogether. You can see how quickly the clouds are streaming by here. Now, perhaps it's not my head <laughs> that you really want to see in the camera. But if I just pan away a little, and then hopefully this skyline comes into view, and then you can see all the different buildings from an absolute different perspective. How cool is that? There must be something about Moscow City and black cars, <laughs> because they're the only ones parked here in this little undercroft of a parking area and they're all the same color. That's just a little bit bizarre, really. Every model of vehicle is only black. Maybe you can't park here if you've got a white car or a car of a different color. Somebody let me know. Have a look at this car. This is huge. What model of car is this? Somebody let me know in the comments what model this is. It's sort of a four wheel drive of some kind. <laughs> but it's a pretty cool car. Wow. Maybe I really have just come across all of the fancy cars in one area. And this trend of black cars continue <laughs> the whole way down the small street right here. There's every model possible and only in the one color. And finally at the very end, is the car that I want to go for a drive in at some point. A Porsche right there. As the G-Wagon starts his engine up and he looks like he's out of here. What a view of these buildings. I wonder if they all work in here. I would have to think they do. I have actually walked around quite a lot of motorbikes in the center here. And of course I pointed out that it's free parking for the motorbikes. So all of these Harley Davidsons, free parking. Now, of course, in winter time, these would be hidden away and no one would possibly be riding in the snow and the ice. But come springtime like right now, beautiful time to ride a motorbike. Let me know in the comments, are you a motorbike rider or do you prefer cars? It really is interesting just to keep looking up as I'm walking around each of the different streets and then getting a different view of the buildings. And have a look at these couple here, they're kind of off-centered. It's like awkwardly built Lego blocks that make up these towers. There's so many different angles that I could make this video about and I think just the uniqueness of the place and how different the buildings are and then finding those tunnels underground. And then some of the very cool cars. Now, you know, I'm not a huge fan of BMW, especially because of the way they like to park. And this guy here has taken up two spots as well. I don't know what model it is. Somebody let me know. But should he take two spots up? And then we have Mercedes, a couple of them in the row. And then 
we've got Rolls Royce. Check that out. And it's got the, the reverse opening doors there, if you can see. That's a pretty cool car. He's got a pretty cool number plate too. James Bond, 007. Maybe James Bond is here somewhere. And then Maybach, and then another Mercedes. So please don't hold it against me because I always make fun of BMW drivers. They are some beautiful cars. But no matter where I go in Moscow, they seem to think they rule the car parking spaces and they can take two spots. <laughs> Well, they can park right at the entrance. <laughs> so if you're a BMW owner, I'm sorry. Don't be offended. Just take it on the chin and it is what it is. Perhaps this isn't the side of Moscow City that a lot of people get to see. A few streets away from the center and then literally you've got the traditional five level Krashovka style buildings. And these are absolutely everywhere in Russia. And imagine they were here in the center at one point and now slowly they're disappearing and these ones are actually boarded up. I think the one on the left has people living in it and then over on the right hand side they're all closed down. And then literally as I pan around you then can see again all of these stunning buildings. Have a look at that blue sky view now. It's like a whole different place from where I arrived at a few hours ago. And then again, we can see that curly building, whatever the name of it is again. I really should remember them all. And where we're going to go now is into Afia Mall and have a look at that a little bit closer. And there's another clump of motorbikes parked right here, taking advantage of free parking. Now, if you're interested in motorbikes, I've actually been to a dealership in Moscow, which is actually the largest in all of Russia. So if you want to have a look at that video, I'll put a link to it and you can have a look at some of the models of bikes that are more than available in Russia. And again, more of these Harley Davidsons right here. Oh, what a beautiful bike. If you're wondering where all the people that live in Moscow City come supermarket shopping, this is probably considered one of the nicest supermarkets in Russia as a brand. It's called as Bukokuza or ABC of taste and this store is probably as nice as it comes when you think of luxury or premium supermarkets and all the different food that you can get. Now of course you could drive out to the suburbs and go to some of the more uh, classic Russian supermarkets or more typical supermarkets I like to call them but ABC of taste this is actually on a whole different level Got fresh orange juice now I'm not going to walk around this entire store we're going to get over to the shopping mall and check it out and they've got a very nice pastry and cake bar right here and then on the upstairs level they've actually got a wine store as well it's a little bit hard to see Actually check out the roof. It's like the one of those buildings in Italy where the light shines through. But if you're wanting something that you just can't find in Russia, particularly an imported brand, you would find it in this shop guaranteed. Welcome everybody to Afia Mall. And basically at this point, I'm gonna walk through the mall, show you around and then eventually walk out and get to the train station for me to go home. Now this is a very big shopping mall. It's four levels underground and then six levels above ground. Now we did see a little bit of the building uh, from outside as I've been looking around at the different towers. But well, there's a lot to see in this place. Now I'm not gonna literally do an entire walk around of this shopping mall. It really does deserve its own separate video. But it's just so fascinating that in the absolute center of Moscow City, this shopping center exists. The way I kind of see it, it feels like they built this first and then they built all the towers around it. And they've got the open roof there so you can actually see the buildings from different angles as well. And all the levels going up from here. There is actually the 
information booth here for Panorama 360 and you can actually go to one of the top floors of one of the buildings here in Moscow City. The only thing that I'm not in love with is the price. Pretty much $24 a ticket to have a view of Moscow. Now, a lot of people have asked me to go to Astankana Tower. Now, I'm gonna arrange that in a few days time to go up there and have a look at the view from Astankana because it's considerably cheaper and you get just as good a view of Moscow. Now, I think you know pretty much from most of my videos, I'm not one to complain about things a whole lot. I just don't like the ticket prices of Panorama 360. You know, of course, it's on the top floor of a building. It's pretty prime space and real estate in Moscow. But I think they could have a lower price than what it is now. The one thing that they pitch to you is that there's an unlimited amount of ice cream that you can eat and an unlimited amount of chocolate because they've got a little ice cream factory up there and a chocolate factory. Now, $24, let me know where you live. Do you think that's a fair price to pay for a view of the city? Once you actually walk around Afia Mall, it does start to look like a lot of other shopping malls in Russia, especially once you're inside these different aisles that you're walking up and down. And a lot of the stores are repeated throughout all the shopping centers in Moscow. Now there is actually a lot of people in here. A lot of people use this as a thoroughfare between the buildings as well. The metro is connected to this. So there's a lot of people that come to work in Moscow City that will come through this shopping center and not necessarily come shopping here, but use it as a passage to get from one point to the other. Then this is the main atrium of the shopping center itself. So I'm still on the ground floor or street level where I walked in. And then you can see this big roof I'm pretty sure it's the same salesman that sells this glass domed roof to all the shopping centers. Sorry about the flashing lights. You can again see all of the buildings through the glass windows as well. Looks like this Restore has had a rebranding. Now in all the other shopping centers in Moscow, this is a premium reseller of Apple products. And this is no different. But they do seem to have some other non Apple products in here as well. Of course, the very classic uh, tables with the laptops on right there. Now, someone told me a story about the laptops and the fact that they measure the angle of the screen of all of them so they're all exactly matching. Now, please tell me if that's true or not if you go to an Apple store. It's definitely pretty impressive when you come to this middle part of the shopping center. Now I quite often come here to go to the conventions at the Moscow Expo Center which is literally the next building from this. So I'd come out of the metro, go through the shopping center and then go to whatever expo has been held at the time and just impressive to see especially again where you take a bit of time just to look up and stare at some of the views that you probably wouldn't notice when you come here on a normal day of the week. I thought I'd walk upstairs to this upper level to get a bit of a better idea of this main atrium area. Now, essentially the rest of the shopping center is different aisles that go all the way down and all the way back again over five levels. So there's a lot of the same just repeated, you know, like you would see in other uh, shopping centers. So it's just a matter of trying to find something that stands out from other places as I walk around. Now, of course, a lot of the brands we know very well. Lacoste right here. Now there's, of course, very little difference in this shopping mall. Perhaps, I think for me, there's probably a little bit more high-end fashion stores and a lot more smaller boutique type clothing stores for men and ladies which aren't necessarily in all of the other Russian typical shopping centers. I think what's really lost on this shopping center when you walk around is the amount of underground 
uh, shopping that they have and the passageways that lead to this main central part of the building. And it's really hard to show that on camera, you know, all of these laneways that sort of dart off in different directions and, you know, lead to other buildings or lead to the metro stations. I mean, I think you can roughly get an idea of how big it is, but it's certainly a lot to sort of cover in one video. I mean, for me, just looking up and seeing the buildings is enough in itself, you know, and how big this place feels. And just the amount of people that you see walking around and then going in and out of the stores. Perhaps you've watched a few of my other videos and this is where the rest of the population come shopping, at least while you're here in Moscow City, Eurospa. I've done a couple of videos on different locations, not this particular one. So if you want to see a tour of Eurospa, check one of the links and the cards in the video. That's actually where I stopped and had a few slices of pizza. Now I'm not going to do a review of the place because really, you know, it's pizza. That's about it. Now, hopefully from here, you can see how far off in the distance this underground level goes. I mean, all the way to the opposite end of the building. And then perhaps when we saw it from outside, we could get a bit of an idea of just how big the entire shopping center is. It just keeps going and going. And again, there's shops on either side of these corridors here. So there's a lot to take in. I think realistically, there's probably about 400 shops combined with the whole shopping center. I mean, I'm just taking a bit of a guesstimate, but if there's 450 shops, then so be it, we've missed a few. <laughs> it's just a lot. It's a lot of walking too. I mean, when you come to Moscow City, come with comfortable shoes and just prepare to walk. One thing that's definitely noticeable when you walk around is there isn't any closed stores and all of the businesses have somebody trading in them in some form. Maybe this is Victoria's Secret's friend, perhaps. I always love to read these English worded signs and how they've got slightly different spelling or slight twist on a name. Now there's shop after shop. And I hope it gives you a bit of a perspective of just how big these shopping centers are and the amount of people streaming in them and going through them. I feel like I'm in everybody's way as I'm walking around. I thought before I get on my train to go home, we'd have one last look at the buildings of Moscow City and from another angle. So every time I'm sort of filming the buildings, I'm on another street or looking in another direction and just taking it all in. Now it's a little bit later in the afternoon than when I arrived. It's actually sunny now, although the shadow from the buildings doesn't make it look as nice as it feels compared to earlier when I was getting rained on. Now you're seeing a lot of people going home, especially a lot of people who work the traditional nine to five jobs here in the buildings. So everybody's making their way across the road to get on the metro. I mean, probably 95% of people that come to Moscow City come by public transport. You know, it's just easier to get in and out of here. Of course, you could take a scooter home if you live close by. But everybody's flocking to the metro, which is where I'm going to head to as well. The station where I'm actually going to, it's quite interesting because it's got three forms of train transportation. So there's the traditional metro, and then there's the overland train, which is what I'm going to catch, the D4. And then there's also a train, train line called the Moscow Central Diameter, or MCD. So there's three types of train coming all to the one station right in front of me. I wish it was a lot easier to film and walk at the same time, but this particular station, it's got a lot of new passages that have 
only recently opened to connect all of these three different types of trains at the one station. Now, I've actually caught this train from here quite a few times, so I know the way, but it's not easy to actually film and walk. I'm not one of those bloggers that can do this quite as easy. And just like that, my town is on the sign, Aprilivka. Now, the reason that is, is because my station is actually the last stop on the line. And then typically they name the line after the first and last stop. So I just gotta go up this very nice, brand new elevator or escalator and jump on my train. So the train I need to catch is gonna come on this track right here. And you can just see the other train, that's the other Moscow Central diameter just going by on the other side of the windows here in a completely other direction. So they actually have these digital screens that tell you what time your train is. Now I've got to wait another three minutes for my train. It's actually also an emergency call point. And I just noticed they've actually got USB charging here on the side. And then if it works, which I think it will, they've also got wireless charging right there. How cool is that? As the train in the other direction comes roaring into the station. And actually, this one is my train coming right now. So as my train pulls away from the station, I'm gonna say thanks everybody for watching the video and the tour of Moscow City and to see Afia Mall and to see the tunnels around and underneath all of the high-rise buildings. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and post a comment, let me know what you think. And you know, is it like a city where you live? I mean, of course, Moscow is a metropolis and there's not a lot of cities that can compare like for like with this. But please let me know in the comments what you think of the video. And if you wanna follow me on Telegram, there's a link coming up right now. You can click that. And if you want to check out an old video on the channel, there's one coming up right here. You can see an old video perhaps that you've not seen on the channel before. Thanks everybody. I'm off on another adventure. Bye.